Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Peter Barber. I am primarily a professional opera singer, music producer, and of course a bass vocalist. Today for the first time we're going to be checking out a new artist. This is SB19 performing MAPA live on the Wish USA bus, which is a new thing I've been checking out lately. There's so many great performances from wonderful artists on Wish. Shout out to them for doing this. This one, this group has been recommended to me a number of times and I've never seen them. I know that they're a Filipino pop group. That is all I know, and we're about to dive in here momentarily. Guys, please do like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Please leave a comment for the algorithm. Please hit the bell for notifications. And if I am bringing a lot to your listening experience, do consider joining my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. It's very helpful to support me as a young artist, creator, singer, all that good stuff. By the way, this is a reaction and analysis, so you will be getting my first take on it. I have never seen this before. But I will be pausing to talk especially about vocal technique, because that's where my expertise lies. And I'll also talk about other musical things, other artistic choices they make, kind of whatever pops up. Um, so without further ado, let's check out SB19 performing MAPA live on the Wish USA bus. So obviously I don't know the language, I don't know these artists, I don't know this group yet, so we're going to be commenting pretty raw just on, you know, what I'm hearing based on the vocal technique and whatever else comes up, but um... So far, we've got this singer, you know, approaching this in a very soft, uh, soft, fully connected to chest voice, but opting for a softer, breathier approach to the sound. I always say this is a great place to start a vocal performance because it gives you a long way to go. If you start the performance belting your head off, we don't, you know, it, it, it makes it much more difficult to get a proper climax later in the song. If you start the song lower in your range and a bit softer, Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. whatever they're singing softer breathier it opts for a large range of power and dynamics that you can introduce later in the song so on principle it's a good place to start because it gives you somewhere to go and some somewhere to grow towards <laughs> Mama, como está la dina? Tayo lagi na kikita, mis na kita sobra. Wish, one o seven. All right, okay. So again, I don't know these. I don't. I do not know these singers. So I'm not gonna try to name them or anything like that. This is this is what the fans are for, right? You you can tell me who I'm commenting what about. Mama. So what we see already here very quickly, and this is pretty standard for um, pop singing with a more natural approach compared to opera or something. That's, you know, that's what I do. And opera is a very unnatural way to sing. When you're singing pop music, a lot of these pop singers, a lot of them actually are untrained. It's just like kind of raw, you know, God-given talent, whatever you want to talk about. These singers might be trained. I don't know. But something that happens is lower in the range, you get a much more breathy, uh, softer tone. And as you ascend in range, naturally the vocal folds want to come together tighter. Uh, basically, you're going to get more efficient vocal fold closure. You're going to use less air. Less air is escaping through the vocal folds, which is going to result <clears throat> in a more powerful, efficient sound, like a sound you hear when a pop singer or a musical theater singer is belting up high in their chest voice. It's a very efficient sound, very pure sound. So what you can hear already in this singer is that just listen to the timbral difference between the very bottom of their range in this section versus the higher notes. Now this obviously isn't a big extreme demonstration of the singer's range yet, but you can already tell in whatever the fifth or the octave that this singer is covering as this singer ascends in the range, the vocal fold efficiency gets higher. So it's more breathy in the bottom, a little more efficient at the top. Mama. Breathy. 
Less breathy on that high note. High note. Tayo laging nakikita, miss na kita sobra. It's subtle here because these notes are all, you know, relatively close to one another, but you can still hear a difference between what's going on at the top vocally and what's going on at the bottom. Wish 107.5. Lagi na lang kami ang nauna. Di ba pwedeng ikaw muna? So we're uh, E4 right now. Um, that's the pitch we're at. That's the high note we're hearing in this part is an E4. So this is performed live. Obviously, there are some effects thrown on, like you can hear the delay and the echo and like some extra atmosphere added to the sound that you don't get just recording into a dry studio session. Um, but these performances are live. So everything you're hearing is done in real time, which is super cool. I do. It's I have I have a great appreciation for the Wish USA bus and all these performances I've been hearing because it's very cool to hear live performance. It adds it adds something special to it. Okay. I also really like this singer's jacket. <laughs> Unrelated to music. Okay, so this is cool. So we're getting... So the singer comes in pure chest voice, and then for the first two jumps up to that high note, they're flipping into a head voice falsetto. And then the third time they jump up to the high note, they keep it connected to the chest voice. So up to high A's, that's an A4. A minor third below tenor high C is the, are those high notes. So that's A3, B3, A3, A4. So a nice octave jump there. And of course, you can hear the obvious flip up into the head voice. You can hear the timbral change. You can hear how it switches from <clears throat> a mechanism of singing with more body in it, you might call it which is that connection to the, the chest register. And then when it flips up, it goes to a more heady mechanism, a lighter mechanism, or an M2 versus M1 mechanism. A really nice transition up and back down though. Like a, that's a, especially coming back down, very smooth. Full chest. So you can hear that you can hear the clear differences, you know, tamarly in terms of power, in terms of the the frequency structure. Like there's more cut to the sound when he extends up in chest voice, because that's really stretching out the vocal folds. When a, when a male singer is in their pure chest voice, uh they are using the whole, they are stretching the whole vocal fold, both, sorry, they're stretching both vocal folds out when they're creating the sound. When they flip up into a head voice falsetto, then only the edge of the vocal folds, the mucosal membrane, remains vibrating. And that is part of what contributes to the, that's a big part of what contributes to the difference in timbre. And when you're stretching, you're literally stretching your vocal folds up in chest voice, and you have to have power and coordination to keep them phonating like that, to keep engaging both vocal folds fully with, with all the mass that comes along with it. And so that's when you get up into belt range and you get up into like, you know, high operatic singing where it really mechanistically is like healthy yelling. It's like breath supported yelling. Um, if you, if you strip away, um, the kind of nuance of what's going on. So that, that's the quality we get from, him and his when he goes up to this high a and chest voice you can hear that kind of raw yelly sound that's because his vocal folds are really stretching out to get there right there so again here another just another Right off the bat, we get a nice example of this third singer lowering their range, 
this A3, a much more breathy sound, but then when they stretch the vocal folds up to get to that high A, that A4, the vocal folds really come together tightly, and again, we return back to this belt quality where the vocal folds are really stretching, this kind of healthy yelling. So just flag them. They happen back to back, so it's easy to hear the difference of color there. Right there. So listen how breathy that bottom note is, and then how not breathy the top note is. That was a that was a much easier high A than this singer displayed earlier. The, the one earlier, probably because he was jumping from the A3 to the A4, there was a little more squeeze in it. This one sounded much easier for him to get to. Did I miss it? Right here. Easy high A. at least a three-part harmony going on here. <clears throat> Impossible to tell who's doing what, but at least a three-part harmony. So we got a new a new section of the song here, a uh, fourth solo. So far, all these solos have pretty obviously been tenors. Um, so we'll see if the fifth man here, I think on the bottom left, is a bass. Um, I've seen a, a few... A few pop groups lately that that actually have a bass which is great i mean there's there's historically been very few basses in pop music so i'm like sweet bring on the bass totally unbiased obviously <laughs> anyway this is a new section of the song and for the first section we had just soloist with whatever instrumentation was happening now there's a little more motion happening in the, in the instrumentation the drums have picked up there's more movement and we have the other singers doing some background parts right here now his but his solo part so far is just staying right a lot very much in the same range so you're not getting as much of that timbral difference note to note as you were hearing with some of the other soloists um it's like hovering like bass lines like a c-sharp four and he, he's going up from there um but that's kind of like the bass line that he's hovering around <laughs> Back up to that high A. So really efficient. You can hear that. Uh, uh, that like really vocal folds are really coming together. It's got that. It's got that yelly quality to it. And that's what's so exciting about singing high in chest voice is because it is a little yelly. It usually is like a little bit like uh, like what's gonna happen. You know that's that's one really exciting thing in a kind of twisted way about watching a tenor sing a big high C in an operatic setting is because even really, really solid, well-trained operatic tenor, tenors, they're not guaranteed to hit that high C every time. There's always a risk that they will crack or miss the note or whatever. So, I mean, that applies to anyone going for a high note, really. But a, a tenor singing a high C in full chest voice is like one of the most exciting things in vocal music. And it's because there is a little bit of risk factor there. You're not totally confident what's going to happen. Um, at least for like most most tenor voice types. There are some tenor voice types that really have C's, high C C's, like a like a high leggero Rossini tenor. You know, they can sing C's all days. Not as much risk, but like a lyric tenor or like a spinto a spinto tenor. You're like a little bit on the edge of your seat when you know a high C's coming up. <laughs> How how 
old someone let me know how old these singers are i mean they look they look young some of them have braces i don't know if that's you know if it's if the age when you get braces is different in the philippines than the states normally for the states it's like middle school high school are these guys high school out age they could be they look very young um now this this singer is also singing in tenor range i just have this weird suspicion that his voice is more comfortable, lower, but we'll find out. He's opting for opting for uh, the falsetto a little more often than the rest of them. And there's a darker there's a darker quality to the sound, even though he's not using like a lowered larynx or or, or a, a you know. A, Gola aperta is what you call it in, in opera, just like an open throat sound where you get a darker, warmer tone on purpose. Just naturally, the voice sounds a little darker, a little smokier up there. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if there might be some bass potential in that singer. I hope we find out. They look like high school age to me like they look like high school age kids which is really cool <clears throat> i cannot imagine having the fame that this group has found at high school age that is like mind-boggling to me um something else i want to flag because these performances are live there's been a few very minor tuning issues during some of the solo lines but especially during these group sections they're very well in tune now i'm sure they've got in-ear some kind of in-ear situation where they hear their mix in real time, which is very helpful for tuning. But it is hard to sing in tune in a studio setting, and it's hard to sing in tune when you're sitting down. And so this is something I keep flagging watching these Wish Bus performances, is they are these singers are really against all the odds to give a good performance. Because you want to give your best performance, you know, singing not into a microphone, or not, not with studio headphones on. You don't want to be singing sitting down. And singing live, obviously, is another factor where tuning is, it is what it is. Um, so the singers on the Wish Bus have got to be ready to nail it in a tough situation because of, not to mention the pressure of like people literally filming them right outside the window. No, you know, you get used to that kind of thing, but uh, I just want to flag it. It's like, it is something that you can kind of only really appreciate if you've done it or if you've if you if you're a performer and you're like wow they're performing under all these weird conditions and still doing a good job so hats off to these gents for that and all the other performers that come on the wish bus <laughs> mm. we had a nice belt here from our friend in the in the red and white um, and a nice little riff there. I, I do love a little riff. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so starting on the F sharp four, coming down to the E four after the riff. <laughs> into the bridge of the song. So red and white jacket is singing upper harmony. We've got guy who might be some kind of lower voice type singing lower harmony. His mic could come up a little. They've got him a little bit too quiet for this mix which i they could probably adjust real time <clears throat> but singing pretty pretty well in tune on this little this little duet during this bridge section That's 
they all end on this bell, this harmonized belt together to kind of climax this bridge section. I'm guessing they still have the true climax of the song to go because we still got a minute and 40 seconds left. I down to down to an A2 at least so that's at least getting down into the baritone register no there's a quality there's still a, 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 a the singer has room below that A I don't know how much lower Maybe not a bass voice, but a I would I would from what I've heard so far, I would say lower voice type than what we hear from the other four singers. And a key change up. All right, so we've got repeat of the chorus, right? This is the final chorus. This is when you want to make everything most exciting. This is when you're probably going to see the most vocal fireworks throughout the piece. We have two of them, the 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 guy in the middle and the one in the in the jacket to his right, the red and white jacket to his right are both ad I think probably ad-libbing riffs, ad-libbing some belting. I'm sure they've performed this song a bunch before, so I'm sure through experience they have found things that work, things that don't. Um, but usually talented singers like these, like the people in this group, there is, of course, you learn the music and you learn all the right notes. But when you're doing stuff like this, the belting, the riffing, a lot of that usually, or at least some of that usually comes uh, spontaneously. Kind of what you're feeling in the moment best conveys, you know, the emotions, the message of the song. And it will often change a little bit performance to performance. Maybe you find a riff you really like and you keep that one. But for the most part, you're going to change it up a little bit. And if you're good at riffing, you can do that. And you can riff in tune and you don't need to plan for it. So there's probably an element of that going on. The key change up that's up to an up to an f5 so obviously a head voice falsetto up above tenor high c f5 this tenor worth flagging this tenor really likes to use the jaw to kind of accentuate the notes being sung in these riffs very common technique used probably a lot of the time with pop singers unintentionally but it does kind of it just jostles the voice in a way that makes clearer distinctions between the pitches than if you were to not move your apparatus at all So we've cl we've climaxed the song. All of them, or a number of them, belting big harmonies. You know, big drums and orchestration in the background. At least two of them doing a lot of ad lib belting or a lot of riffing on the belting, even if it's not ad libbed. And now, as you'd expect, for the final section, you kind of bring it back to a more intimate place where it started. This is a very classic structure to a song that just works it just works you start it intimately you build to a climax and then you end it kind of where you started oh, oh, oh. big fan of this singer's voice i don't want to play favorites but he's my favorite <laughs> so, so far Really, really a, a particularly beautiful voice. Uh, 
Oh, and, some, and some nice vibrato happening as well, which I can always respect. Uh, uh, a nice, a nice consistent vibrato. That means there's that means there's a number of things going on properly in the vocal apparatus and with the breath support system to have that nice consistent vibrato. Heck yeah, SB19. Sweet. All right. First time ever hearing this group. Uh, clearly a lot of talent going on. Four tenors and one baritone until I hear further. That's what I'm That's what I'm calling it. Um, again, obviously don't know the language. Don't know what they're singing about. Commenting really purely on vocal technique and other behind-the-scenes things like the jaw movement with the riffing. Um Really enjoyed this. I'm sure I'll be checking out more of them. I know they're a very popular group. I've get a, I get a lot of recommendations to listen to their music. So this is a fun first foray into this new artistic adventure. And uh, guys, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. If you did learn something, if you found yourself enjoying the music more, then definitely consider joining my Patreon to support me as a creator, as an educator, as a young artist, as a singer. And uh, as always... Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment for the algorithm. Could literally just be saying, hi, Peter. A lot of you have been doing that on other videos, and it's wonderful. It's hilarious. And it helps the algorithm. And uh, hit the bell if you want to be notified whenever I come out with new videos. I'm trying to do two a week now. So Monday, th Mondays, Thursdays, I'm trying to do videos like this now that I have video editors, which is very helpful. So guys, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.